Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today, I'm talking about Sabretooth, number one. Today's book is another exploration of the top-selling comics of 1993. Sabretooth, number one, was the number 48 top-selling book that year. Something interesting about it is artist Mark Teixeira also had a near two top 50 books come out union number one um which came out the same summer this had an august cover date and this had a june cover date union number one was the uh, 53rd top selling book of the same year so mark Teixeira really kicking butt in 1993 with these two two books But Sabretooth being the Marvel book, being tied to X-Men, it's going to get a few spots higher than even a, an image number one. Pretty eye-catching cover with the uh, all-red Sabretooth logo. As I recall, this was the first Sabretooth solo series of any type. They did a few more, at least a one-shot, maybe a couple more throughout the years, but I believe this was the first one. So I guess the technical name of this series is Sabretooth Death Hunt ambushed by his past on a quest for his life. Die cut cover has to have some kind of gimmick. It's the 90s, but it opens up to this beautiful painted piece by Teixeira. Pretty awesome. You know, saber tooth. I love the way he does his claws right there. They actually look like animal claws coming out of the tips of his fingers. They're not just long fingernails. And this book starts off like pretty well, not necessarily on this first page. I mean, I do like the coloring here, the um, kind of just duotone that we have in this inside this limo. It pulls up to this mansion, and I can't think of a time before this where we actually know anything about where Sabretooth lives. He always just kind of shows up to mostly fight Wolverine or whoever, generally hired as some type of an assassin. Um, but yeah, he lives in like a mansion in Vancouver. Which makes sense. If he's like a professional assassin, he's probably making a lot of money. So he would have this estate. Looks like it has a C there for Creed. But as he gets out, he is ambushed by the hand. Long time daredevil nemesis, but also intertwined with uh, Wolverine. So it makes sense that the hand would try to attack Sabretooth. So now we are starting off with a bang. Let's hit up the credits real quick. Hunt, Home is the Hunter by Larry Hama, longtime Wolverine writer, so it makes sense that he would get to do this series. Mark Teixeira, artist. Richard Starkings doing the lettering, and I believe he's probably still doing hand lettering at this point. Uh, Steve Busoletto, I guess that's how you say his name, is on the colorist. Bob Harris, editor. Tom DeFalco, editor in chief at this point. This is a super awesome splash page. I, th I think that's. You know, there's like the iconic Wolverine fighting the hand in uh, the original Frank Miller Wolverine miniseries where he's like jumping out of a window and taking on all the ninjas. This kind of gives me those, those feelings. Of course, he just starts making real short work of them. I said this in the video I made for Union, but... The more I look at Tashira, it kind of gives me some Gene Colan vibes. Um, there's a fluidity to his his uh, line work that it just makes me think of that. Of course, I wouldn't have had any clue of that back when I originally read this. I had no idea who Gene Colan was, really. Um, but now that I do know both artists, I can see that I don't know if it's a direct influence or just they kind of have the same like wavelength of the way they want motion to be... Uh, to be rendered, but I, I find that comparison something I'd like to look a little bit more into. I don't remember this character much. Um, this isn't her first appearance or anything. Her name is Birdie. Pretty, pretty awesome here. Total 90s, gigantic gun. Um, this uh, uh, sh belt of shells. Look how many have already hit the ground. <laughs> They're like falling, falling in a big pile. This gun must have no recoil because she's just standing there with her hand on her hip, hip, uh, blasting away. That's an awesome panel too. 
they're just coming at him. He's throwing them up. So this book is starting out pretty awesome. They finally get them all done, and he just kind of, he kicks in the door of his own house. I guess he's just so mad and frustrated. Something to note is these pictures hanging on the wall with slashes across their face. I don't know if these are people that he's taken out, people that he has grudges against. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> Former family members that he's maybe killed. Uh, but it is interesting as, you, as they walk through, all of them have it. I guess it's also worth noting that it's a three slash, but it's a pretty big slash. Anyway, so I guess he keeps Birdie around. She must be in debt to him for some reason. Um, it almost sounds like she's indentured to him in some way, but he's keeping her around. He likes her. She has some kind of psychic ability, and she's kind of helping him work through similar stuff that Wolverine has going on with like uh, rep repressed memories and such. He did something he like throws her into the the hot tub here. She's like, you shouldn't do that with somebody that can mess around in your mind. <laughs> and he was like, he's like, you wouldn't dare because you know if it doesn't work, <laughs> you know what would happen. Pretty cocky, pretty arrogant. Look at that arm. <laughs> the sheriff made a beefy, beefy dude. It's funny, I don't remember his uh, Ghost Rider work having like this kind of musculature and like big huge upper bodies and stuff with kind of like it shrinks down to like small legs but he does the same thing over in the union book that um, i mentioned i mean he made those two kind of at the same time so you know kind of makes sense that that would be what he was working on i like this color use here too it's this like yellow with the green over the eyes Overall, this whole book has some pretty good coloring. So he's like, go ahead. Let's go into my brain. Let me let me sort through some of the horrors um, that I've forgotten. She So she unleashes there. Now we get a little backstory on Sabretooth as a, as a young boy. He's in these manacles. Uh, even has like a muzzle on. Interesting stuff going on right here as it travels down through through his memories, I guess, and pulls that out. Pretty cool effect. I would guess that's his face there, too, kind of twisting and distorting. And it's almost like she can see, I guess she can see him. She's like, who are you? They call me Creed. <laughs> Like, yes, I'll be your friend. So I think she's thinking she can manipulate, maybe use his, uh, the subconscious of his inner child to maybe manipulate him. Um, but he, he's deceptive even then, even as a child. So he, he goes after her, but she's like, he doesn't want to hurt me. And he, he kind of, I guess that's kind of like a motherly instinct, or well, he's taking it as a motherly instinct. But then Creed himself we kind of comes to, the boy disappears, and he's like, that's enough. And he doesn't like that she was trying to manipulate the uh, inner child of him, and hits her. <laughs> Look at these things on the wall here, too. <laughs> it's got, Hands with an axe. <laughs> Human hands with an axe, like stuffed on the wall. A boar's head. It's not another boar's head. But human hands with an axe. Like, that's just, that's absurd. <laughs> Later. So now we've got to have her walking around in a towel. And <laughs> now, while she's in the towel, she decides she's going to turn off the security system and let in these mercenary 
dudes. While she's in the towel. <laughs> kind of silly. Um, so she lets these guys in to come get him. I guess this is she's trying to kind of save herself because, like I said, it seems that she's in some kind of indentured servitude to him and can't get away, worried that maybe he would hunt her down, giving these guys a chance to come get him. Of course, he wakes up. He, sl he must sleep in this like vault chamber to keep himself safe. There's those axe uh, hands with the axe again. And a new deer head. Was that there before too? That wasn't there. Is that a separate separate set of steps with a separate set of axe hands? More 90s ridiculous guns. I feel like this piece was used for some promo art. This particular saber tooth. Naturally, he starts ripping them to shreds. I like looking at these ads. It gives you a nice little time capsule as well. Because here's you've got the Azrael Batman. Deathmate going on, uh, X Men twenty ninety nine. Already have a video of that. They finally kind of subdue him with this like uh, electrified net, I guess. Uh, it's able, it's enough to just knock him out, or it's probably keeping him shocked the whole time. I'm coming back, Birdie. You're gonna get yours. I'm going to fix you. You hear that? I'm going to fix you. <laughs> so she, she knows she's in for it because he she watched him take out most of those guys. Back to his childhood and he is chained up like an animal, like a literal dog in the basement. And I'm going to assume that this liquid all around him is urine. Because he has nowhere to go to the bathroom. They literally have like a dog ball, bowl and a bone <laughs> and a ball. A couple of bones laying around. And I guess this is his father is coming in. And he's going to pull these pliers out to come after his teeth. His mother doesn't want to do it. But the father, of course, is you know going to be the abuser. And you kind of see where this character is, is made. is made to be the uh, murdering assassin that he is. I don't know how this plays with the uh, Wolverine origin series. I know there was a character named Dog in that book that was kind of implied to be Sabretooth initially, but maybe they backtracked that and said it wasn't Sabretooth later on. Um, and then there's a lot of like Wolverine origin stuff, I, you know, that came out in the like early 2010s. That I, I've never read, so I don't know what this contradicts or what that stuff play if this led to anything or not we've got him strapped to a, a table here almost like a weapon x project and they say that they gave him some upgrades and made him turbo saber tooth uh, which of course he's like oh you made me stronger that's a mistake for you <laughs> And then they were like, well, we actually also put like a bomb inside your chest. So, you know, if you try to do anything against us, then uh, we'll set that off. Can you survive a bomb in your chest? And he's like, how am I supposed to believe that? And I'm like, oh, well, we did it to this guy too. Just watch this hand operative. Just watch. Boom. And blew him up from the inside. So this character's name Tribune. Looks a lot like Master Chief uh, from, or even a Transformer from Halo. <laughs> And he says, we want you to go after Mystique. And he's like, fine, I'll do it. And then I'm coming after you. And that's the end of issue number one. I think this was like a really solid start to this, this book. You got a, a lot of good uh, backstory on Sabretooth. Um, set up the plot for the rest of the miniseries pretty well. I, you know, Mystique. 
has her history with the X-Men. So that, that makes for an interesting thing, dynamic to, to go after her, um, for that to be the plot of the miniseries. And then it'll continue to explore, of course, some of Sabretooth's background as well. Early Travis Shray. Pinup, pretty cool. Michael Golden. Not as detailed as a lot of Michael Golden stuff that I'm, I think of. Almost like he whipped that out pretty fast. Oh, there's that Sabretooth again. Maybe that's why I'm thinking it's promo art. Anyway, so that's that's the number 48 top selling book of 1993. That's all I got for it today. Until next time, read your comics.